Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. Today we go fast with a short video without any editing because at 2pm we have a big priority live presentation conference of Conseil Sao. And I can't wait to hear him because he already trained, he already played and unfortunately he already injured himself. So I want to hear from him how long it will take before seeing him back on the field. What were his first impressions on playing with the Juve shirt, etc, etc. We will cover it here live on the channel. So I can't wait. Let me know also if you are watching this video before I was live or after I was live. I'm really curious to see what is the timing that you are watching that video. But pay attention because this one, even if it's a short video, is a really interesting one. Because we will play three games. Or right? this is how people are watching at it. Empoli, PSV and Napoli and I know that Empoli is probably the less sexy on paper because you are all waiting for Juve to go back in Champions League after one year of missing out not because of Juve but we all know the story and then the return as well of Antonio Conte to the Allianz Stadium against a Napoli that of course you always want to beat I always told you and I confirm and I reaffirm the one that is actually making me the most worry is the one against Empoli but seriously yeah I'm scared about the game against Empoli and I will tell you why in a second. Because there is a word, inexperience, that is putting that game of Empoli at danger. So put a maximum of like if you didn't yet. Please continue to subscribe to the channel because now we start with Kefren Turam and Timo Timoea. Yesterday, the newness, the big news, they were back in La Continassa. No, actually, they never went away. They always stayed there in La Continassa, but they were training partially or totally individually. Yesterday, they joined the group, and I'm extremely happy about that. Will they be ready to start against Empoli? Probably not, but at least to be there on the bench, which is really a beautiful news, because then we can expect to start seeing them against or PSV or Napoli in the next one. These two players are equally important. Kefren Turan, because we know how he started the season. We know that we invested in him. We are waiting for him to also pair up with a Douglas Luiz to recuperate the ball, to be that defensive midfielder that we are needing with speed, with acceleration, with defensive skills, with interception, with these long legs on the field, and also a way to be there in the rotations, especially now with Conceição that is missing. So two extremely important players. Yesterday, there were also Savona, Cambiaso, Gatti, Fagioli, even Kenan Yildiz that were back in La Continassa. So that's good because they, are, they landed and immediately started to train. Today, the three South Americans, Gonzalez, Cabal and Danilo will also be back. I don't know if they will train immediately or they will wait until tomorrow, depending on the timing that they will land. Last time, speaking about uh, the international break, I want to come back on an article that I was reading this morning in Gazzetta dello Sport. Gazzetta, Gazzetta. And no, because Gazzetta, they told me, big title in a yellow box there, for the Bianconeri, only 10 players were leaving La Continassa to play with their respective international teams. And I said, oh, that's a big advantage, honestly, because I always said it. More players are leaving, less players you have at disposal to work and to prepare the next game after the international break. That is always a difficult one, especially for the big teams that are missing their players to work with. So if, if they are not there, what are you working on? What are you working with? So it's really, really difficult to prepare these games. And I said only 10 players leaving. It's a big advantage for Juventus comparing to the other teams. It's true that I didn't pay attention too much to the other ones. I know that Empoli missed out three players leaving. That's not a lot, but it's a lot for a small team. On the other side, I said, hmm, big advantage for Juve, because then Inter, Milan, Napoli, Roma, etc., etc., are missing a lot. And only 10 players. This is the big title of Gazzetta. But then I start reading the article, because you know that I love to enter the details. What do I see? Inter missed 11 players. Milan missed 11 players. Napoli missed 12 players. And no. Because you, you can't even see it in the article. You really need to be concentrated and focused to don't miss that information. Only 10 players leaving from Juve. Inter 11, Milan 11. Uh, guys, what are we speaking about? And not, and not, because this is not the reality anymore. We are speaking about exactly the same players leaving in terms of quantity from one team and the other one. You know who is really suffering from it? It is Rama. 
that's a real big difference with 19 players leaving. 19 is really a lot. That's making really a big difference for Daniele De Rossi. Not that they will play against you because you already played against them and we did 0-0, but for the next coming games in Serie A and in Europe. I'm not even sure if they are playing in Europe. But you know how you tell the story? Bad, we know it. Huh? Before entering, why I'm really fearing Empoli, let me go back fast because we are doing it every single year because it's an important date we are the 12th of september yeah we are the 12th of september 31 years ago alessandro del piero made his official debut with the bianconeri with the number 16 back then he replaced ravanelli and when he's entering the field the first thing that he's doing is going to roberto baggio the captain back then to exchange a few words about the positioning, probably also what the coach told him to do, Trapattoni. Beautiful. The rest is history. The rest is really history. What can I say about that? Well, it's something that I love to repeat a lot of years, or every single year, is the fact that on that day, Alessandro Del Piero made his official debut with Juventus, while I, Beppe, made probably his official debut as a professional supporter. I was already following football, I was already a football supporter, a Juve supporter, because I started to support a bit, or I started to follow a bit football with Italia 90, World Cup 90, with Toto Schilacci and his goals, Roberto Baggio, etc., etc., but really, you know, there is a difference uh, between just watching a few games, uh, they're a part of the game because you're really a kid, and then really starting to be a professional one, being interested, starting to read some articles, informing yourself, supporting, watching 90 minutes. Well, probably it's that day. Del Piero made his professional debut with Juve. I made my professional debut with a, with a, as a supporter. And since then, I'm crazy about Juve. I made a tattoo about Juve. I read so many books. I inform myself. I read. And then it brought me to open my own YouTube channel to speak every single day, multiple times a day about Juventus in English or in whatever other language. And also the chance to also make my official debut at my club four years ago at Juventus Football Club. Not as a football player, luckily not as a football player. Congratulations, Alessandro Del Piero. I read an article this morning or the words of uh, Totti, Corriere dello Sport. Totti that said we are a bit too much, we are too big, and this is why we are not in our club, speaking about him, about Maldini, about Alessandro Del Piero, having a role, an important role in their club, because the weight, the importance, the iconic, legendary status of these players are probably a bit too much, a bit too big for the people in the management, because of what they represent for the supporters. And partially, I totally agree with uh, with uh, with and uh, with um, Francesco Totti when he's saying that. Because of course, when you have a Del Piero, <sighs> Del Piero is Del Piero. We saw how it went with Maldini. Totti a few weeks, a few months probably uh, at Roma management before leaving again. I, I agree with that. Is it a pity to not see your idols, to see the icons in the at the head of your club? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. On the other side, I always told you that mm, for me, it's not even that necessary. I prefer having them here fresh in my mind, living from these beautiful memories like the official debut of Del Piero, remembering the fantastic goals or assists or cups that we won, the Champions League of Del Piero, of young Del Piero, the Scudetti, that bicycle assist uh, for David Trezeguet in a Scudetto goal against Milan. I prefer remembering that than going towards an Andrea Pirlo, for example, taking the bench of Juve uh, and then reading Pirlo out, or the management of uh, Nedved, uh, Nedved Nedved out, or Nedved is a bit excessive, or Nedved that, I prefer that we have them a bit further away. And then there is also something, it's not because you are an icon, it's not because you were a fantastic legendary football player that you are a great manager. If Maldini showed already a lot of beautiful things, smart person, if Del Piero, I have never doubted about his intelligence and also the fact that he could potentially even do something in management, well, for Francesco Totti, uh, with all the respect for his fantastic career, not always he has been known as the most intelligent person. So, But that's another discussion from one number 10 or a number 16 that became actually the legendary number 10. We go 
to another one, to the number 15 that became the number 10. And we all dream that he can become an icon of Juventus because if he becomes a legend, if he becomes an icon, it means that he did extremely well, maybe already starting from this season. It is Kenan Yildiz. We don't speak too much about Kenan Yildiz for what reason? Because a striker is judged on his assist. A striker is judged especially on his goals. And at the moment, we see that in season 24-25, Kenan Yildiz didn't score yet. Beautiful performance against Como. Beautiful performance against Verona. A bit less against Roma. He played a different role. Well, I expect him also to play on his original role there, a bit more on the left. A bit the position that uh, Alessandro Del Piero was starting with when he was playing that 4-3-3 of Marcello Lippi, for example, with Ravanelli and Vialli. And we all know how it went with these beautiful goals uh, Ala Del Piero against Dortmund, for example. So that's what I wish also for Kenan Yelis to start immediately uh, to bang some goal, to be again on the top, on the front page, so that we can speak more and more about Kenan that can win a boost of confidence. But today, Gazzetta dello Sport is speaking us about Champions League. It's really strange, yeah, because they don't speak about the Serie A that is actually at the door, because we start again on Saturday. They're already speaking us about Champions League with the calendar of all the diverse teams. Manchester City Inter will be the first big game for Inter. Milan Liverpool, we play against Eindhoven. Um, then you have an Atalanta Arsenal, Bologna against Shakhtar Donetsk. And then you have all the other games. Well, there is something that is really coating my eyes. And that's why I'm telling you that I'm really fearing the game against Empoli. Because when we are looking at the players that never played a single minute in Champions League, well, we have a few. Conceição is not one of them. Sorry, guys. Nico Gonzalez. Hey, I get. I, I will not edit that video, so you will see that blooper. But uh, Nico Gonzalez. I need to get used to our new players. Nico Gonzalez never played a single game in Champions League. Douglas Luiz never played a single game in Champions League. Same for Di Gregorio, Cambiaso, Savona, Cabal, Rui, Adzic, Mbangula, Yildiz. All players that are part of that first team that never played a single game, a single minute in. Champions League. So a lot, huh? because we are speaking about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 players out of, I believe, 25, 26 players. That's nearly half of the team, or if not 40% of the team that never played a single minute. And that's a lot in experience. And that's why I'm telling you, ragazzi, I'm fearing the game against Empoli, because I would be scared that on paper, it's the easiest game of the three. And people players, they will already start thinking about that PSV game, already starting to hear that music while we are playing against Empoli, that I remind is at the moment still unbeaten. So pay attention, Juve. Pay attention, because that experience, we know it, we are thrilled. If I'm asking the supporters, what is the game that you are expecting the most? If we make a poll, you will, the most one will say PSV, Beppe. This is the game that we are waiting for. We care about Empoli because we see our boys back on the field, but we play against Empoli every single... We want to play Champions League. And I'm fearing that young players of 19, 20 are thinking the same. Then I will tell you, but calma, because you have the other ones with a lot of experience that will take care of these boys. And no, <laughs> and no. For what reason? Because Coop Manners, that is the one that should bring experience in that team. Goals, assist, leadership. We heard him in press conference, played only five games in Champions League, eh? never scored a single goal in Champions League. <laughs> you want other players? Dusan Vlaovic, the number nine, the one that is paid the most in Serie A, seven games in Champions League, two goals, the one of Villarreal, do you remember? And then another goal against Maccabi Haifa, 593 minutes only for the Serbian number nine of Juve. It's not a lot. Eh? Then you go towards Bremer, the wall three games in Champions League so far. That's it, huh? only three games. And we can continue like that, and Di Gregorio as well. Zoff today spoke about Di Gregorio, spoke about uh, Motta, and he said, Juventus, you're in safe hands. Speaking, of course, because Zoff, ex-legend, still legend of Juventus Football Club as a coach, but especially as a goalkeeper before. Well, Zoff spoke about it. Well, I want not to go into the details of that article, but also Thiago Motta will play for the very first time Champions League as a coach. He never coached Champions League. He never actually did in his career. Bologna, Spezia, Genoa, Paris Saint-Germain youth. He never played 
Champions League. He never prepared two games in a week or even three games in a week. So that will be new. What we win with Thiago Motta is experience of the competition. 82 games, five goals, more assists than goals in that competition. And he won it twice with two different clubs. He arrived, he knows what it is to play that competition, to win that competition. So that player's experience will be important to share with the team. And it will be extremely important for him to uh, use that experience because otherwise we don't have. You know who has experience? Milik. Because Milik has played 24 games. Not wow, not a lot, but already scored 10 goals. Well, Milik is not there yet. And Milik starts to be a real problem for Juventus because you remember when he had that injury, we were all thinking, bah, it's a matter of a few weeks, it will be there at the start. Of He's still not there. He's dreaming about being on the bench against Napoli, but at the moment, he's still not there. And it's a real big problem. So we need a solution for Dusan Vlaovic because I don't expect Dusan Vlaovic to be on the bench in these three games, but who enters instead of Dusan Vlaovic? Nico Gonzalez is at the moment the solution, but pay attention because Milik starts to be really now a problem if he's not recuperating fast. The other player that has experience, and that's where... We are asking ourselves, when will he play? Will he become a case or not? It's Danilo with 62 games in Champions League with different teams. Porto, Manchester City, Real Madrid, Juventus Football Club. So he knows how to play that competition. And another one that has a bit of experience, because when we are speaking about 15 games and comparing it with the team that we have, 15 is already a lot with two goals scored, is Conceição, 15 games played in Champions League with two different teams, Porto and Ajax, scored already two goals in that competition. Well, about Consensao, let's speak about him later live together. So I hope you watch this video now and after the live, because actually I thought it would have been much shorter. It is not. Anyway, still no edit. I hope you appreciate it. Maximum of like, don't forget to subscribe. Grazie, forza. You. Ciao.